when y'all go home and you're talking to your buddies and they say, ah, he wants to take my gun away. You've heard it here. I'm on television, so everybody knows it. I believe in the Second Amendment. I believe in people's lawful right to bear arms. I will not take your shotgun away. I will not take your rifle away. I won't take your handgun away. And the words need to lead to action. We know this is a complex issue that stirs deeply held passions and political divides. And as I said on Sunday night, uh, there's no law or set of laws that can prevent every senseless act of violence in our society. We're going to need to work on making access to mental health care at least as easy as access to a gun. We're going to need to look more closely at a culture that all too often glorifies guns and violence. And any actions we must take must begin inside the home and inside our hearts. But the fact that this problem is complex can no longer be an excuse for doing nothing. The fact that we can't prevent every act of violence doesn't mean we can't steadily reduce the violence and prevent the very worst violence. That's why I've asked the Vice President to lead an effort that includes members of my cabinet and outside organizations to come up with a set of concrete proposals no later than January, proposals that I then intend to push without delay. This is not some Washington commission. This is not something where folks are going to be studying the issue for six months and publishing a report that gets read and then pushed aside. This is a team that has a very specific task to pull together real reforms right now. I asked Joe to lead this effort in part because he wrote the 1994 crime bill that helped law enforcement bring down the rate of violent crime in this country. That plan, uh, uh, that bill uh, also included the assault weapons ban that was publicly supported at the time by former presidents, including Ronald Reagan. The good news is there's already a growing consensus for us to build from. A majority of Americans support banning the sale of military-style assault weapons. A majority of Americans support banning the sale of high-capacity ammunition clips. A majority of Americans support laws requiring background checks before all gun purchases so that cr criminals can't take advantage of legal loopholes to buy a gun from somebody who won't take the responsibility of doing a background check. You, you got Obama phone? Yes, everybody in Cleveland, no minority, got Obama phone. Got Keep phone Obama phone. in president, you know? He what? gave us a phone. He gave you he a phone. Do more. How do you give you a phone? You, you sign up, if you're, you're on full stamps, you on social security, you got low income, you disability. Hey, I'm you I'm okay, what's wrong with Romney again? Romney, he sucks. He's bad. So that tells me something immediately about Michelle Obama. Um, that she is willing to play that role. And I think that she's as much a fake, personally, as Barack Obama. And Barack Obama is one of the major, major fakes. And interestingly, and this has surprised me a little bit, the number of people, former Obama supporters, who are seeing, if you like, the error of their ways, um, is happening much quicker than I thought it would. Because he is turning back so many of the things that he said he would um, he would not do, he's doing the opposite. And uh, it's the usual thing in politics. Tell them what they want to hear, get into power, do what you always intended to do. And there's no better example than Barack Obama. M Mr. Mr. Fake President, if ever there was one. I never thought this day would ever happen. I won't have to worry about putting gas in my car. I won't have to worry about paying my mortgage. You know, if I, if I help him, he's going to help me. Stop complaining. Stop grumbling. Stop crying. I'll make our government open and transparent so that anyone can ensure that our business is the people's business. Now, Justice Louis Brandeis once said, sunlight is the greatest disinfectant. And as president, I'm going to make it impossible for congressmen or lobbyists to slip pork barrel projects or 
corporate welfare into laws when no one's looking, because when I'm president, meetings where laws are written will be more open to the public, no more secrecy. That's a commitment I make to you as president. No more secrecy. And when there's a bill that ends up on my desk as president, you, the public, will have five days to look online and find out what's in it before I sign it. So that you know what your government's doing. When there are meetings between lobbyists and a government agency, we'll put as many, as po many of those meetings as possible online for every American to watch. When there's a tax bill being debated in Congress, you will know the names of the corporations that would benefit and how much money they would get. And we will put every corporate tax break and every pork barrel project online for every American to see. You will know who asked for them, and you can decide whether your representative is actually representing you. There's a difference between Democrat and Republican. Oh, God, it's the way you tell them, honestly. God, oh, gee, you ought to take up stand-up. Um, well, we have um, two masks in Britain called Labour and Conservative. We have two masks in America called Republican and Democrat. And all four masks um, are placed on the same face. Um, uh, in in a, a, a book uh, called the David Icke Guide to the Global Conspiracy, I follow a uh, chain of events right back from the 1940s and show without any question that uh, the Labour and Conservative parties in Britain are fundamentally connected. The idea is to give the illusion of choice while having no choice whatsoever. This is how the political system works. Whichever party is in government introduces the agenda because they have the ability to introduce legislation. The party in opposition opposes the agenda, but it doesn't matter because it's got no power to do anything. We then have a farce called an election. And every now and again, the two parties change sides. Now, the party that was in opposition and imposed the agenda, uh, or op opposed the agenda, now imposes it. And people say, hold on a minute, you said this in opposition and now you're doing the opposite. Yes, because it has the power to impose the agenda. The party that was imposing the agenda before and is now the opposition, it opposes the agenda now. I will get our troops home, we will bring an end to this war. I have determined that it is in our vital national interest to send an additional 30,000 U.S. troops to Afghanistan. I do not make this decision lightly. This first executive order that we are signing uh, by the authority vested in me as president, the, uh, president by the Constitution and the laws of the United States of America in order to affect the appropriate disposition of individuals currently detained by the Department of Defense at Guantanamo uh, and promptly to close the detention facility at Guantanamo consistent with the national security and the foreign policy interests of the United States and the interests of justice I hereby order. And we then provide uh, the process whereby Guantanamo will be closed uh, no later than one year from now. We will be, uh, is there a separate um, executive order, Greg, with respect to how we're going to dispose of the detainees? Is that it? Uh, when, uh, we will be setting up a process uh, whereby this is going to be taking place. We have a responsibility to act. That's what's happened in Libya over the course of these last six weeks. Uh, because, you know, it is just wonderful to be back in Oregon, and over the last 15 months we've traveled uh, to every corner of the United States. Uh, I've now been in 57 states. I think one left to go. Uh, one left to go. Uh, Alaska and Hawaii I was not allowed to go to, even though I really wanted to visit, but my staff would not go. Uh,
In a prison of snakes, can't get away though every single day. Try to remember watching 9-11 on the DVG. Its towers crumbling one by one. That really was our liberty. Undone things started the darkest days. And the false messiah came our way. Now we can't look away or run away. But we try every single day. We cannot shake this motherfucking false messiah. It comes today like hot fire. Thrown up in your face on the dollar bill. Replace the Masonic seal with the devil's face. Yes, everybody in Cleveland, low minority, got Obama phone. Keep Obama in president, you know. He what? gave us a phone. He gave you he a phone. More. How do he give you a phone? You, you sign up. If you're, you on food stamps, you on social security, you got low income, you disability. I have a question. Okay, what's wrong with Romney again? Romney, he sucks. He